Welcome back to Builds Not Projects. This week I am going to be trying to build a powder coating oven out of these two free ovens I got. So the one, the element sitting on the top, it blew up an element and they ended up getting a new oven. So we'll uh, see both of these supposedly work. I'll probably use the controls off of the white one to because it's all digital. So I, I'm thinking I'm gonna try to use that for the controller. And then I'm gonna essentially stack these two on top of each other and then build the firebox larger so I can try to end up with a vertical, a large vertical firebox. So let's uh, get started and see how this goes. Start tearing it apart. Well, making good progress so far. So I got the uh, both of them disassembled as much as I need to. Um, I took the uh, newer white one, stuck it on top, and then I need to get my plasma cutter out and the welder and uh, chop all of uh, this bottom section out, and then like and weld weld the legs on. It doesn't sit quite flat right now. There's a little bubble underneath here, so I'm gonna notch this out so it can sit flat and then I can start kind of tacking it together. I'm gonna just kind of tack weld everything together with the, with the welder instead of trying to figure out where to screw it all together. I think it'll be faster and stronger. I'll just go that route. Big old pile of insulation that came out of both of these. So I'll start getting that chopped up and then once all of that stuff's cut up, I'll cut the front out and all that. And then um, I, I'll be able to start cutting the, the firebox for the top and the bottom get those cut and then figure out figure out how we're going to connect the two um, and then also we'll have to figure out doors and wiring and all that but to start with we'll get the uh, get the shell all made so we'll keep working on that. making some progress on the ovens got the bottom of the top one cut out and the top of the bottom one cut out and then all the piece in between um, the main reason I'm building this oven is so I can powder coat the uh, the KD 175 frame but it uh, currently doesn't fit that way it's only about I don't know what like four inches too short or too skinny and this way it ends up about I don't know, nine inches or so too shallow. So um, I'm gonna use the top and bottoms that I cut out and widen the, cut the whole thing down the middle and widen the whole thing uh, about 20-ish inches and essentially make it like one and two thirds wide instead of just this standard setup. Um, and it'll be, be able to fit dirt bike frames just fine. So um, we'll get started cutting on it and go from there. All 
All right, they are finally connected together again. Um, it looks interesting to say the least, just using a bunch of random chunks of metal that came off of them and then some random miscellaneous stuff that I had laying around like that chunk of galvanized in the middle um, just to help hold them together. I had these chunks of tube laying around out back, so I grabbed those and was able to use them to structurally connect the top and bottom in the front. I didn't really have any way to do it in the back, so I just used all of the sheet metal to connect it again, and it's, I mean, it's, yeah, it's pretty solid again. It'll get better as all of this other stuff gets connected again. Um, so I think now uh, I've got the bottom three pieces that'll make the very bottom portion and then just up the sides a little bit and kind of a little deal on the back. Um, so what I want to do is I'm going to put some of the insulation in, drape it in around there, put all the metal in, and then either screw or tack weld it into place because the way that the two stoves are, the top portion, in order to take out the firebox, um, you had to like remove the entire thing, uh, which the bottom one, you can see it has the front face and then there was a, the firebox was an insert. So it's all gonna be just welded in there. So I wanna get as much of the insulation in as I can, especially around the bottom before I weld it in because there's no removable sides. The top portion, these sides slide up and pop off and I'll be able to wrap the insulation over the top. So we'll get started. Well, I'm finally back on the uh, build for the powder coating oven. Um, I had to take a few weeks off again because I had hernia surgery. So now that I'm getting pretty healed up from that, I'm going to get back on to building stuff. So I don't remember where I left off last time, but um, basically got two ovens turned into almost a four oven sized thing. Um, so I need to put the top panel in, get insulation ran through it, and then build a panel for all the rest of that big X. So we'll uh, get started doing that and then we can move on to getting elements and stuff put in. Well, making good progress so far. Um, got these other panels put in, the sides and back and top. I also got the sides all insulated, around the back all insulated as well. Um, I need to build a couple of little pieces to fill in here out of just the little scraps I had left over from that scrap sheet of uh, 18 gauge. Also need to fill in a couple of little gaps. Um, the sheet just wasn't quite big enough. So it ended up being a little bit goofy, but um, it'll work. So I'll fill those in. I think I'm going to find some sort of a high temp like seam sealer that I can use in here maybe. Um, and then that way I can seal up most of the air gaps and all that. Um, but ovens do have a vent to begin with, which this one's still up in there. So, I mean, it's got a hole coming out anyways, but it'd be nice to have it seal up as good as we can. And then uh, here's the backside so far. I mean, all the insulation, all this stuff will get covered up later on, but for now, this will do.
so we got the doors mounted on there. Um, basically built this frame out of some scrap already bent tubing that I had laying around. So got these doors mounted in place. I'm using the old oven doors because one, the top one has a window and they're also already insulated and everything. So it'll just make it a little bit better, I think that way. And then that I can use that window still. So it's all mounted up on some hinges. It opens and closes nice. Um, the inside of the oven, I still need to patch in a few spots like that and that one there. And then there's a couple more that I still need to patch in. Um, once all those are patched, I can start mounting in the elements and all the wiring and everything. But I also need to get the inside of this door done. I need to sheet sheet in around the outside edges, fill it with insulation. Um, I also need to do the outside of it and get it all, that way it's all insulated. And I'm probably gonna end up putting the latch on this side because it doesn't shut very well. So I just need to put, like it doesn't sit in there super tight. So I just need to put something that I can clip into place. Uh, nothing super fancy there, but just something to hold it so it stays shut. Um, once that door is all insulated, I'm probably going to have to either add some sort of weight to the bottom of the oven just to keep it from tipping over because when it's all opened up here, swings open, um, it doesn't take a whole lot of pressure and you can, you can tip it over. So if I add much more weight to this door, I think we're going to have a problem with it trying to tip over. So... I'll probably end up adding maybe even just some concrete blocks or something down in the bottom to help hold it in place. Or we'll just have to build some straps and strap it to the wall to keep it from tipping over when it's all plugged in and hot because that would be a, a bad day to have it land on top of you while it's all hot. And You probably can't hear me at all over the uh, sound of the hail, but making some progress here. Let's go see what it looks like outside. Got some nice uh, hail going on. Yep. 
that's some uh, pretty big hail going on out there for a... Uh... Oh, yeah, it's slowing down a little bit. Well, not the prettiest oven, um, but it was free. And it's all the inside stuff's patched together. I needed to, I just want to get some high temp silicone or something if I need to, to uh, kind of seam seal some of the joints. All of the elements are in. I need to kind of clean out the bottom, but the inside of the door, door's all insulated. I need to get a latch for the door. And other than that, it's all done. Uh, mounted the control panel over here. It all turns on. I wired it to the same three wire plug that the welder takes. So that way I can just plug it into the extension cord that I have for the welder and for the lift and everything just like that. So now that the uh, powder coating oven is all done, oh, I have this big old chunk of I-beam sitting up on the top of it for now to help weight it a little bit. Eventually I'll end up probably mounting it underneath, but that way uh, when the door gets opened up, the whole thing doesn't tip over. So the, uh, the hanging rod I built is just a piece of solid round stock that I cut to fit so you can actually put it in any of the factory notches on the walls, which is kind of nice. Um, and then that way you can position it wherever. So now that that's done, I can get back to getting that dirt bike done because I wanted to build this so I can powder coat that frame. And that's why it ended up so big is so I can do that. And then actually it may end up working for the lawnmower frame as well. But thanks for watching this video. I'm going to try to start posting more often. So make sure you uh, stick around and we'll be getting back into it soon.